In this video, we're going to be talking about whether you should have a big launch or if you should just get started. Now, there's pros and cons to each, and we're going to go over them in this video. Hello and welcome, Brett here with ClickMill.co. And in this video, we're gonna be addressing whether we should do a big launch or we shouldn't, and we should just start the thing that we're talking about. Now, I wanna clarify the thing. This applies to digital marketing. It also applies to in-person marketing. So you've got your physical church and physical ministries that people actually show up to, and you have your digital presence and you're launching a YouTube video. This is going to apply to both. You're trying to start a new ministry in your church. Should you launch it or should you just get started? It also applies to some kind of digital thing that you're putting together. Should you have a big launch and send it out to everybody and do all the things and get it just right? Or should you just throw it out there and get it moving? So let's Let's start with the launch strategy. Big launch. What are the pros of doing a big launch? I think the most obvious benefit of doing a big launch with either a ministry in person or a ministry online is that it gets lots of attention, lots of eyes, and frankly, the currency online from a digital marketing perspective is attention. You don't have anything until you have people who are listening to you. This is a big deal. This is a big thing in favor of doing a launch. It also, the second big thing, the pro of a launch strategy is it gets people in the front door usually. So once you have this big Big event, then people go, oh, let's go see if there's more of that. And I want to dig into that a little bit more. When you do a launch, what you're really doing is you're promising to meet a need that your audience has. Now, the first question is, does your audience actually have that need? And we're going to talk about that a little later. But once you have the launch, that's the need that you've promised. And if you got the need right and they actually have that need, they actually have that problem that you're saying, hey, I'll come alongside you and help you solve that in your life. So when they come back, if they don't find anything in your ministry that continues to meet that need, they feel really disappointed. They feel cheated. They feel maybe even a little bit misled because, you know, I don't know, An example from my own personal experience with ministry, my wife and I were going to a church for a while and they had this amazing couples marriage conference and they had these professional biblical marriage counselors come in. And I mean, we learned a lot. Well, we already went to the church, but there's no couples group. And so all these people who came from all over the community, there's nothing there for them. So the launch was all they had. They had a big launch. They had a flash in the pan and now there's no follow up. Okay. Now, what are the cons of a launch? And I think oftentimes, at least in the Western church, we really miss this because we love to launch. We love to get people in the front doors of the church. So first and foremost, launch efforts take a ton of resources. They take time, they take energy, they take your effort, they take focus and attention off of other things. I know of ministries, I work with ministries that have multiple big events every year and some of the past Pastors can sometimes feel like they can't actually give attention to the consistent ministries because those launches are taking, those events are taking their time and their resources. So that is an opportunity cost we have to weigh. What is the outcome of the launch? And is it really worth the resources, the time, the finances, the money, the attention, all of the things that we have to put in to launch it? Now, another con of launching, whatever it is you're launching, is that it often, at least in the church happens before feedback. And I want to talk about this a little bit because it's so important. So to talk about feedback, I want to give away the whole marketing game. Okay. There's one, you know, super secret that marketers know that nobody else knows. I'm just going to tell you right now. And that is that it doesn't matter what you think your audience wants. It doesn't matter that you think this is going to be a great event that, or that you think, you know, your audience will love it. The question is, what does your audience need? What do they actually love? And this is a big miss for pretty much anybody other than marketers, because we assume that we know what people want. And this is kind of the idea, oh, I'm going to start a business. I have a great idea. Ideas really aren't worth anything. The problems of other people and the needs of other people is where the value is. I can have a great idea to make broccoli ice cream. 
it's an amazing idea, but you're not going to buy it. You're not going to want it. So same thing with me and with you. It doesn't matter what you think your audience wants. The question is, does this event actually solve a problem that they're having? Same is true for me. Does this video actually solve a problem you're having? And so we're going to talk about what to do if, let's say, this video is off base or if your event is off base. But circling back around, launches usually happen before we actually get feedback. So we don't know how it's going to be perceived by our audience. Now, let's continue and let's look at, we'll just call it the Instapost strategy. Just start it, whether it's a physical ministry or a video you're putting on YouTube, whatever it is, just start it. Now, I think that the church, at least in the West, is going to pretty heavily lean toward launches. We love our launches. So what do you mean, just get it out there, just start it? So let's talk about some pros of no launching and just throwing it out there and getting it moving. So here's the first benefit of what we'll just again call Instapost. We're just getting it out there is it takes very little time, very little energy, very low resources. You and your ministry team could start and test five ministries, five, like let's we'll say a Bible study group, a men's group, a women's group, a, you know, a missions group. I, you know, I don't know. You could start and test five if you just insta started them and just said, all right, you go do this on this day. You go do this on this day. And you could test five of those for the time and energy it would take to do one event. So that is a pretty significant thing. And the reason why I say that is as a result of the 80, 20 rule, which I talk about in other videos that's known as the Pareto principle, but 80% of your efforts gets 20% of the results. 20% of your efforts often gets 80% of the results. So if you think, well, we're not going to put all this time launching and promoting and all this stuff. Let's just start the couples group that takes 20% of your energy. Well, you can do that five times and you're probably going to get a lot more results in many cases. So it takes less energy and you can create ministries and start them faster. That is the number one benefit of the Instapost. Secondly, it lays a solid foundation. So now you have, let's say, five ministries. And instead of doing the one big event, you started five weekly ministries. How does this lay a solid foundation? Well, people go to what they need. So don't push these things hard. You know, announce it. But we're not launching it, right? Just announce it. Hey, we're starting a couples group. We're starting a missions group. And we're starting a men's group and a women's group. And, you know, I don't know, one more. A free food group. I don't know. Um, but we're starting these five groups. And, you know, here are the times you can pick up the flyer in the back that has the time so you can put it on your fridge, whichever one. And, you know, you can announce it once a week or something. And whichever one people show up to, that's the one that's meeting their needs. The other ones that don't get traction, don't try to force people into them. Don't try to convince them. Just get rid of them. It didn't take much time or energy to start anyway. So now maybe you've tried five ministries. People only showed up to two, the free food ministry and the missions ministry. I love missions. I'm always using that as an example. So you got a really good traction with two. Nobody else cares about the others. Just phase them out. Just disappear them. You know, And you've got two really good ministries. And then what do you do? You do it again. Now, we're laying a solid foundation to bring it back because now you don't have these ministries that you launched and they're all flashy, but they don't actually meet a need. We're not assuming that. We're testing multiple things, seeing what people actually want because they come to the things that meet their needs. And then we're keeping the ones that are functional, the ones that are sustainable, the ones that actually engage your audience. So now we have a solid foundation of ministries that are really powerfully impacting your audience. And each one took less resources to start. Another benefit of this Instapost or just get started strategy is that there's less disappointment because you don't have as many eyes on it. And that's really beneficial at the beginning because, you know, you have your, let's say, broccoli ice cream event, right? Your big launch, nobody shows up. They're like, well, that's disappointing. I'm not going to that. Or maybe you have delicious ice cream event and everybody shows up and then they show up to your church, but you don't have more delicious ice cream that they love. 
Well, that's disappointing. And in my opinion, this is one of the reasons why we face a lot of pushback in our culture when we're sharing the gospel or we're trying to get people to church. It's not that we're just trying to get them to come on a level playing field. So many people feel let down because they've been to church in the past. Their needs weren't met. And then, of course, you know, people get, you know, we're all people. So people feel hurt at church sometimes. And so they go, well, I don't want to go there anymore. So a lot of times we're fighting an uphill battle, getting people to come into church. Well, what we don't want is we don't want people to feel disappointed. So when we lay this solid foundation with InstaPost, firstly, there are less people to feel disappointed if we accidentally miss the mark and we all miss the mark. Maybe I'm missing the mark with this video. Tell me what you want videos about and I will make videos about what problems you're facing on a day to day basis. Right. But what we do, you know, if this video misses the mark and you give me feedback. I'm just going to go make a video about something you want. Uh, and again, even this video is based on feedback from a survey. When you start small ministries and you start them quick in rapid succession, and test them to see if they're wanted, less people are going to feel disappointed. And that's going to ostracize less people from your ministries. Now, the last benefit of just getting that ministry going or that digital thing going is that you begin what I call passive ministry. And this is based off of a concept called passive income. So for example, let's say this video really meets your needs and you subscribe, you should subscribe uh, and you subscribe and you start watching all of of these other videos that we're putting out for you and you're commenting and I'm making more videos and this channel grows to the point that YouTube will show ads on it. That is a passive income stream. And this isn't about money. I'm just explaining the passive idea here, but it's a passive income stream. I'm not holding banners on the sidewalk and dancing in a bear suit. I'm sleeping and people are seeing ads and that is a passive income. Well, the same is true with ministry. You can have passive ministry streams and that's what I get so excited about because if you just posted that video on YouTube when you got it, right? Edit it, don't make it perfect, don't do all the things you need to do, don't launch it to the whole email list, don't send just just put it online, do the rest later, tweak it later. Then we would have had people on YouTube finding it for how many weeks before we would have launched. So there is another opportunity cost. If you throw it out right now, people can start finding it on Google. People can start finding it on YouTube. People can start finding it and coming into your ministry online passively while you're sleeping. That's amazing. If it's not online, people can't find it. So you're hoping that that launch, the hype of the launch is going to outweigh what you missed in passive ministry. Now let's get to the cons of just post it. Now I think the biggest con of just posting it is obviously there's less attention. So you can see there's a trade off. It goes both ways. But in this case, there's less attention to get started. Secondly, you may have errors. You may have some things that aren't perfect because you didn't put all of the tons of time and attention and energy and church resources into getting it perfect the first time. You're just seeing if it works. If people are like, yes, couples ministry and free food ministry were there and then men's and women's ministry don't go anywhere. Well, now you know, and what do you do? You go back and you perfect them. But that means on the front end, you might have some typos in the, you know, whatever. You might have not perfect layout. That is a con to the Insta Start model. So to wrap this video up here, what should you do? Should you do the big launch strategy or should you do the Insta Start strategy? Well, of course, all strategies have a time and place. There isn't a right answer in it. There isn't a wrong answer. I do think generally in the church, we lean pretty hard to the big launch strategy. Now, that said, I think that the best way to go about it is to marry the two. I think it would be really beneficial for you and your ministry team to say what Firstly, let's do a survey. What are the biggest needs? What are the biggest problems that people are facing in our ministry and how can we solve those? And then you do the Insta start model and you test five, you test, you know, I don't know, 10 over the course of, you know, I don't know, however many months would be comfortable for your ministry, but you just start a bunch of things, see what people flock to and just phase the rest out, right? Don't put a lot of energy and attention when you have those things that people want, because people will 
run to get their needs met. They will show up. Now, once they're showing up, then perfect those ministries and you save tons of resources. You lay a solid foundation. You know you're meeting people's needs. And so people want to be with you. Then, you know, say one quarter in or not six months in, then you launch it. Then you say, hey, huge service launch. We're starting a couple's ministry. And so if you had a few people who loved it and you didn't launch or didn't do a big launch, well, now you do a big launch. You already know people are going to love it. You already know you're going to get lots of attention. But when they actually come in, say week two after the big marriage conference and they come in, now you know they're going to love the couples group because your couples already love the couples group. And so marrying the two, starting with strategic tests of ministries that you could run in your church or in your ministry, and then moving that into a launch, an actual launch, is going to be a really good recipe for the success and growth of your ministry. Don't stop now. We have tons of other videos for you to watch and learn how to reach more people more effectively. If you love this video and you don't want to miss out on what we have coming up for you next, go ahead, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to keep up to date with our newest content. If you want to work with ClickMill personally, head on over to clickmill.co where you can learn more about our proven ministry marketing strategies. I look forward to seeing you in the very next video.